Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So during my time in quarantine, having limited home workout equipment and also having a goal of trying to cut, I really got into running as my main source of workouts. So um, I've been posting about it frequently on my Facebook and Instagram, but in the past two months, I've been able to go from only being able to run one mile to being able to run five miles. So I've had a lot of people message me um, or comment on my photos asking how I was able to do that so quickly and if I have any tips and tricks. So I thought it would just be super easy to be able to create a video for you. So I have a ton of notes here written down with some tips and tricks that I followed to get to running five miles so quickly. Some of these are common sense and you probably already know, but maybe you don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and share them all and show you how I was able to get to five miles. So the first thing that I did was definitely come up with an end goal. So for me, my goal that I wanted to get to was five miles. Some of you, if you run already, or if you maybe don't wanna run that far or wanna run farther, you can say, I wanna to get to 10 miles. I wanna to get to three miles and set a date that you wanna achieve that goal by. That's gonna be a huge help. So for me, I started out at the end of April and I told myself, I really wanna to get to five miles. And I thought to myself, well, it's the end of April, so surely in eight weeks I would be able to achieve that. I'm going to stick to it. That is what I'm going to do. By the end of June, five miles, no ifs, ands, or buts. So definitely create a goal that you want to do, your distance that you want to run by the end of this date. So if you want to do by the end of summer or whenever, that is totally fine, but definitely do that. It is a huge motivator. It's going to help you track your progress. And it, it just, I really think that helped me out a lot. So that was my first tip. Secondly, um, piling on that is have yourself a week by week goal. So for the first few weeks, um, since I obviously, as far as running goes, I was out of shape. So for the first few weeks, I definitely did a mile, some days too. So it's good to like plan your weeks out. If you have a planner or like a notebook, you can write it down in to plan your week by week running schedule. That would be amazing. It's going to be a huge help. Um, I also have like little calendars that I share from someone that I follow on Instagram where you can track your progress day by day. So you could also use that to like plan out your runs. So if you have like a calendar template or if you go to my Instagram at Sierra Spears, you can find the one that I post every single day to track my running. You could do it that way too. And that'll be a huge help as well. So you don't want to just, you know, one week run one mile, the next week run three, then two, and then, you know, it's just, I don't find that that is helpful. So for me, I planned it out week by week and each week I built my distance. So that is tip number two. Thirdly, um, and you know, this, this may not be um, a factor to everyone, but some people, especially if you're like super athletic or competitive, I'm sure um, this is probably something that you think about when you run and that is your mile time. So ideally, um, I've read from a couple sources that an eight minute mile is like a really good time. Um, but for me, I don't run an eight minute mile, if I'm gonna be completely honest. I think I could if I was running just a single mile, but since I run about three to five miles now, um, every single day, I don't care about my time. I don't care if I run a nine minute mile, eight minutes, 10 minutes, 11, it doesn't matter to me. And if you're trying to build your progress and just be able to go that distance, don't worry about your time just yet. Just focus on making the distance, focus on completing your mile. If it takes you longer, okay, at least you got it done. So if you, um, I track on my Apple Watch, I use the workout app or whatever you use, it's gonna tell you your average pace per mile. Um, just don't let that get to your head and bother you. If it's something that's important to you and you do wanna get the distance and run as fast as possible, obviously that is up to you. But to me, the main thing was getting to my goal and I didn't really care how long it took me to get there. And I think that if I would have been focusing on that, that it would have um, kept me from achieving five miles. I think that I would have been focusing on just trying to run as fast as possible to make my mile time less and I would have burned myself out. So again, completely up to you, but just a tip I followed I don't let my mile time bother me. Next thing that I have here, let's see. Um, this is obviously a no brainer, but I feel like I need to share it because some people just don't get it. And that is that you need to drink water and lots of it. So I aim for either half a gallon, half my body weight or a gallon. 
every single day. Even my rest days, I try to get at least half a gallon. Drinking water is so important for so many reasons that I'm sure you have heard anyone in the fitness industry preach about it, but it is so important, especially when you're running, you need to be hydrated, especially if you're gonna be running a long distance, such as three to five miles. It's a lot to keep your body moving for that long. So it's important to be hydrated so that your muscles don't get fatigued, you don't get dehydrated and pass out when you're running, and it's just good for your overall health, your organs to keep them running, your skin. Honestly, I feel like during this time, since I've just been really focused on my water intake for my runs, my skin has cleared up so much. I don't have any breakouts right now. So on top of it, helping me stay hydrated um, for my runs, it's been a huge help with my skin too. So if you don't drink enough water, you need to start. It's the easiest thing you can do to just drink water. I know when you get into it, it can be an inconvenience because you have to pee all the time, but it's important. It's gonna help you in more ways than you can think. The next thing, obviously this is going on top of that as well, and that is to eat as clean as possible. So I've been trying to cut, so I've been meal prepping, I've been focusing on getting more vegetables, less carbs, um, and you know, not everyone likes to eat a clean diet, but I am gonna tell you the days that I have cheat meals and I go and run the next day, I can definitely tell a difference. The days that I eat clean and then get up in the morning and go run the next day, I feel like I have more energy. I don't feel sluggish. I don't feel like my feet are dragging and I feel like I can run longer before I get super tired. So if you can try to eat as clean as possible, it's definitely gonna help you. I know sometimes we all have bad days. I have bad days where I need to roll through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. I need some chicken nuggets in my life and that is totally fine. I'm definitely not telling you to not have cheat days. I don't like when people say that you can't have fast food, you can't have this, you can't have that. We are human, it is readily available to us literally anywhere you go. So if you have a cheat meal, don't feel bad about it, but especially like Monday through Friday, if you can try to eat as clean as possible, you are gonna feel so much better when you run and your progress is gonna be so much better if you do. Thank me for that later. Next thing here, let's see. Um, next thing is to get a lot of sleep. Again, this is probably a common tip, but it's something that we abuse often. Um, I know a lot of people close to me who get like four to six hours of sleep a night and they're not doing a whole lot of working out. I'll tell you that. When you don't sleep, your body is not resting, it's not recovering from the day before, you're gonna feel tired, you're not gonna be motivated to run, and if you don't sleep, you're not gonna see good results. I can tell you from experience as well, during this journey, if there was a night where I went to bed a little too late, about midnight, and then woke up the next morning at 6.30 to go run, not good. Not that I couldn't get it done, but that I just it just didn't feel good. I felt tired. My mile time definitely was longer, and it just it's just not a good feeling. And you want to make sure you get rest so that your body can recover too. Running long distances can be very strenuous on your body, so it is important to give yourself adequate rest so that when you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed and you're good to go, and you're preventing yourself from any injuries or fatigue. So yes, lots of sleep. I try to get seven to eight hours. That's good for me. If I can get more, I will. So yeah, just if you know when you're gonna wake up in the morning, go eight hours back, make sure you're asleep by that time. It's a very easy tip to follow. I love to sleep. Next thing, when you go running, um, I definitely recommend wearing lighter clothing. So whenever I go to the gym, I love to wear like leggings or joggers or something like that. But when you're running, especially right now, since it is summertime, wearing light clothing is a huge help. It's just gonna help you feel like you can breathe a little better. You're not gonna be as sweaty, not as restricted when you run. So if you have any light clothing, running shorts, tank tops, sports bras, whatever you're comfortable running in, I definitely recommend doing that. I love the loose fitted shorts by Gymshark, which I know Gymshark stuff sells out super quick, but I have seen these in stock a while. They're loose fitted shorts. Any of their lightweight crop tops that are like uh, the tank sleeve, those are perfect. That is like my go-to running outfit. I love it, it's light, it doesn't feel restricted on me. So yes, lightweighted clothing is the best to run in. 
in my opinion. If you live somewhere cold and that doesn't work for you, then leggings will be fine, but just try to limit it. Don't uh, put tons of layers on. That way you, your body can move, you don't feel restricted, and you won't get as sweaty as fast. Next thing, wear comfy shoes. So I, um, I don't buy sneakers too often, which is weird because I work out five days a week, but I'm not too big into buying tennis shoes all the time, maybe just because they're expensive and um, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't buy tennis shoes that often, so I would say if um, you do like to buy tennis shoes or you don't, if you're going to be running, you should invest in a good pair of running shoes. I actually just ordered some new ones yesterday, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I would just say if you can buy a pair of shoes dedicated just for running, that would be great so that you don't wear them out as quickly. But some good brands are like Asics, uh, Saucony or Saucony, really any shoes that have any like additional padding or like foam that can help keep your feet comfortable, I would recommend. I know sometimes we buy shoes just because they're cute or they'll match our favorite gym outfit, but it's going to be all about comfort. That's going to help you be able to run. Your feet won't uh, be tired at the end of your runs as much. They won't be like burning. And um, whenever you're actually physically running, it's going to feel better too on your feet because obviously your body weight is just like going up and down when you're running and there's a lot of weight being put on your legs and feet. So it is important to have a good pair of shoes. Next tip is going to be strength training. So obviously strength training has been a passion of mine as well. It was what I was super into before getting back into running. Um, and you don't have to have access to a gym to strength train, but I think strength training is gonna be important because as I just mentioned, running does put a lot of pressure on your body, especially on your lower half. So don't skip leg day is what I'm saying, but just kidding. Strength training is gonna be a huge help. And the reason for that is because whenever you strength train, you build muscle and having strong leg muscle, strong arm muscle, strong core muscles are gonna help you be able to run better. So if your legs are super weak, your abs are super weak, you're probably gonna get sore a lot easier and it's gonna be harder for you to go long distances. So if you can, especially in the beginning stages, like when I was just running a mile, I definitely would still do 30 minute to one hour workout strength training. Whenever you get to higher distances, if you don't wanna strength train every single day, or if you don't wanna strength train for as long, that's totally fine. But I'd say definitely make sure that you are doing some ab workouts and some leg workouts, cause those are the main muscles you're gonna to use to keep you going. So strength training is a gift. Try and combine that if you can. You will also see better results that way. You will look toned faster, and I think toned is a great look. Next thing, um, this one, and this just kind of, um, I just wanna say like running can seem like a lot, and I get a lot of people telling me like, oh, you ran four miles today? Gross, I hate running. And I honestly just really don't like the negative connotation that comes with running. Running honestly is fun. If you um, really just don't even think about it, just put on some good music and just, you know, just run and just think about your day. Think about things that are stressing you out that you want to get off your plate. Think about your goals. Think about what you're going to do this weekend. Think about your motivation for running. Why are you doing this in the first place? It's going to be a lot more fun for you. So definitely have fun with it. Don't make it a negative thing because then you're never going to reach your goal. And if you don't like running, honestly, don't do it. If you honestly hate running and you're gonna keep that negative connotation or you're just gonna keep telling yourself, I hate this while you're doing it, it's probably not gonna get easier for you and it, you're not just you're not gonna fall in love with it if you think that way. So definitely have a positive mindset and music. Definitely um, invest in some good headphones. I personally love the Beats Solo. I got some for Christmas a couple years ago. I've charged them less than 20 times in the two years that I've had them. So they are fantastic. They are loud and they are noise canceling. So I just put on a good playlist whenever I start my run and I listen to good music and it powers me through my workout and I really enjoy it. But yeah, a good pair of headphones would be good and a killer playlist. Um, if you listen to Apple Music, there's a ton of playlists you can listen to under like the workout genre. If you like browse through there, they have all types of music. So there's like endless amounts to choose from. And I think if you just put on some good music, think about your goals or your future, or something that excites you and have a positive mindset, that is gonna be a huge help as well. So 
next thing um and i kind of mentioned this a little bit is to track your progress so um if you don't have an apple watch or like a fitbit or some kind of like smart watch there are apps readily available to you as well um one that i know off the top of my head that a lot of people use is the nike run club now i will say um that and i've seen this from other people as well it seems that like these fitness trackers are a little bit more accurate than your phone. And I think that might be just because like you're carrying your phone in your hand and this is like connected to your body. I don't know. It just seems like um, these trackers are a little bit more accurate. And I know that Apple Watches and like Fitbits, some of them, since they offer additional features, they can be a little bit expensive. But if you can get some kind of app or even even if it's like an off-brand one, like some type of generic tracker to track your runs, that is going to be so helpful as well. That way you know how far you're running each week. You can track it. Um, what I really love about the Apple Watch is the activity app on your phone. You can open it up and go back as far as you want and see um, your exercise for that day. So you can see how far you ran each day and build your goals on top of that. So that's a huge help if you can get one of those. I know not everyone can afford those. So if the app is all you have, you will still be fine. But just make sure that you're tracking your progress. That's going to be a huge help. That way you know where you're at and you can estimate how far you can run the next week based on top of weeks prior. So that is a huge tip. The next thing, and um, this is also very important and something I want to talk about, is um, listening to your body. So I would love to tell you guys that um, during this journey that every single day I was able to um, run whatever distance I had planned and each week I was able to go farther. Um, I want to tell you that some days that was just not the case. There um, was times where I would run three miles and then the next day I could only run a mile. Couldn't tell you why, I just couldn't do it. But the main thing here is not to beat yourself up if this happens and just be proud of the fact that you did something. It is so important to listen to your body. You can feel when you are exhausted and when you just can't do it. There are times when I will say, yes, it is mind over matter and you can definitely push yourself through, but you can just feel it that there are some days when you just can't do it. And if you've been going five or six days and then, you know, two days later you go to do your run and you just can't do it, that is perfectly okay. Or if you go and run and you don't run as far as you have been, you only say you've been doing four miles and today you can only do two. That is totally fine. Just the next day, try again. It's not a big deal. Like I said, that's the best thing about creating this big end goal for yourself is that you have till this time to get there. It doesn't have to be a straight line. Some days you may be able to run three miles whenever you were only running one. Like that's crazy, that's awesome, right? But then some days you, you may have been running three and now today you can only run one. So my main message here, don't beat yourself up about it. Listen to your body. If your body is tired, you're not gonna be able to power through the workout. And it's just better to take a break and then hit it hard the next day rather than push yourself through it and end up hurting yourself or making it to where you don't wanna do it at all anymore. So yeah, definitely just listen to your body. You will definitely know if you are at that point and it did happen to me a couple of times, but I didn't let it bother me and I definitely didn't let it affect my end goal. And the last thing here that I wanna talk about, and um, I'm gonna say just a little disclaimer here, um, I don't feel that you need to have supplements to see results. You don't, I'm gonna tell you that now. Supplements are not essential. If you are eating healthy foods, exercising regularly, it is not to say that you still can't reach your goals but I do feel like supplements are a huge help and can add to your diet and help you see results faster. So as you guys may know, I do work with One Up Nutrition, so I do take their supplements daily and some supplements that I take from them that I feel were a huge help during this time were one, pre-workout, two, the BCAAs, and protein. So what I'm gonna say, so in the beginning of this process, I would run in the evening so for me, that would be like after I got off work after at like five or six. So I'd be running about like 637. And um, during those times, since I had had a full day of meals already, I would take pre-workout to help fuel my runs. 
and that was super beneficial for me. I'm here recently the past few weeks due to my work schedule changing to the coronavirus, I've actually now had time to start running in the mornings. And for me, that is fasted, which means that I don't eat anything before I go for my run. So for me, um, taking pre-workout on an empty stomach, it upsets my stomach, so I don't do that. So that is why I take my BCAAs. And those are great. They also provide you energy. It's just not as intense as pre-workout, but BCAAs also provide you with a lot of hydration and can help with recovery. And the 1UP Nutrition BCAAs also have glutamine and collagen, which helps with your hair, skin, and nails. So that's super helpful as well. But I take that just to get a little bit of an energy boost and to feel hydrated. And then I don't feel my stomach getting upset and I'm still able to have a little boost to help me power through my run. So I definitely recommend those. And for your post-workout, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend drinking some type of protein. Um, I am lactose intolerant, so I have switched over to the isolate protein, the fruity hoop flavor. That is bomb. But if you like whey protein or vegan protein, they offer those as well. And protein is obviously a huge help. It's going to help your muscles recover. It's going to help you build lean muscle if that is what you're interested in. And having protein is just amazing for your diet. And especially if you're trying to cut, protein is your best friend. So I definitely recommend having a protein shake for after your runs. It's going to be a huge help. So those are all the tips that I have. I feel like all of these things combined have really just helped me progress so much in the last couple of months. Um, I am happy to say that it is obviously the middle of June, so I was actually able to reach my goal before the end of June, which is what I had set originally. So I'm very happy about that, and I feel like these tips that I've been following have been a huge contributor to that, and I've just stayed consistent. So as best as you can, if you can follow these tips, be consistent with them, have your goal, work every day to do that, to get there, and I promise you will definitely see results. I would love to hear some of your stories. I've seen a lot of people that I follow start running now, or people message me telling me that they've been motivated to run because of my posts, and that just makes my heart feel so happy because I just want everyone to be happy and healthy. So if I can help you in any way, or this video helps you in any way too, please let me know. But that is all that I have for today. So I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.